In our last few videos of our botany series, we talked about roots, stems, leaves, and xylem and phloem. Now today on Homeschool Arcade, we're going to be talking about flowers. So let's get to it. Now, when I say the word flower, your favorite, beautiful, sweet smelling plant may pop into your head. But what exactly are flowers and what are their purpose? Before we jump in, it's important to know that not all plants have flowers. And those that have flowers are often referred to as angiosperms. So in this video, we're going to talk about the main purposes of flowers. Then we will go over flower morphology, which is the parts and structure of a flower. And finally, we'll take a look at some pictures of different types of flowers. So what is the purpose of a flower? Well, flowers are the reproductive organ of a plant. They house the pollen, the eggs, and the other reproductive parts that allow a plant to produce seeds. So why are they often so colorful and fragrant? Well, a flower's colors and smells, both good and bad, can be used to attract pollinators such as insects or birds. Now, these pollinators find food that the plant is advertising through the colors and the smells that it gives off. And often, that food is the nectar, and in the process of getting their food, they often pick up pollen and transfer it to the next flower they visit, thereby pollinating it. Now, let's check out this week's FYI. FYI for your information. Every spring, the city of Holland, Michigan holds a tulip time festival. This festival celebrates the beautiful tulip flowers, Dutch heritage, and the Holland, Michigan community. The festival lasts eight days each year with over six million tulips throughout the city. Now that's a lot of tulips. Now, we know the main purpose of a flower, so now let's talk about the morphology or the main parts of a flower. There are actually many different types of flowers and they vary largely in size and structure and color. For example, some plants have a single bloom like a rose or a tulip, while other plants like sunflowers or Queen Anne's lace have a cluster of flowers and all on the same stalk. Now, even though flowers are very diverse, most still share some of the same basic structure. Today, we'll go over those main parts and we'll take a look at this diagram as I explain them. Each flower has a stem called the receptacle, and this receptacle holds up the petals and the other reproductive organs of the flower. And underneath the petals are the leaf-like structures called a sepal. Now, sepals are what protect the flower when a bud is closed. And when a flower is open, all the sepals together are called the calyx. Now, the petals are often the colorful, showy parts of a flower and sometimes have a fragrance and or nectar glands. Now, like we mentioned before, these colors and smells attract pollinators. And interestingly, certain colors and petal shapes attract very specific types of pollinators. For example, hummingbirds are known to be particularly attracted to red trumpet-shaped flowers. And another interesting example are orchids. Which, which those unique petal shapes only allow certain pollinators to enter the flower. And some plants that pollinate through the wind lack a showy petal altogether since they do not need to attract pollinators. So grasses and corn are a couple examples of this type of plant. Now, going back to the diagram, all of the petals together are called the corolla. Next, this part is the stamen, which is the male part of the flower. Now, a stamen has two main parts, which are the flament and the anthers. And the anthers produce and hold the pollen grains, and the pistil is the female part of the flower. Now, it is often located lower than the stamens to help the process of the pollination. And the pistil is often shaped like a bottle or a vase that has three main parts. The base is the ovary, the neck is called the style, and the enlarged sticky top part is called the stigma. The ovary houses an ovule which will produce eggs, and if reproduction is successful, 
the eggs will be pollinated and produce seeds. It's also good to note that not all flowers have male and female parts. Flowers that contain both male and female parts are called complete or perfect flowers. And those that have only male or only female parts are called incomplete or imperfect flowers. So now we know a bit more about the purposes and the parts of flowers. These are amazing and beautiful creations. So let's take a look at a few pictures of various flowers. So I hope you enjoyed this video and reviewed or learned something new. And don't forget to click like and subscribe so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Y'all have a good one.